This evening, Ghana, soon to have a cutting-edge pediatric and maternal hospital. COVID-19, how it continues to impact many patients even after the infection period. Burby's businessman found murdered at his home, suspect confesses. In the region, Colombia president-elect vows to normalize Venezuela ties. And internationally, the world is one misstep from nuclear annihilation, UN chief. Welcome to another broadcast of the Channel 2 Hela News Updates. I am Bibi Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. The Ministry of Education has begun the distribution of the Because We Care Cash Grant to the various schools across the country. The cash grant is being distributed to parents, guardians of every school child in private and public schools. In January, the government announced the increase of its Because We Care Cash Grant initiative from $15,000 to $25,000, while the school uniform program increased from $4,000 to $5,000, making it $30,000 per child. Coupled with the cash grant, the ministry is providing further assistance in the form of textbooks to every child in primary school. Students from grades 7 to 13 will be provided with required mathematics, English and literature textbooks, while the government is working to provide all secondary school students with all the textbooks needed for school. Parents and guardians can uplift the grant at the respective schools of their child or children. The Because We Care Cash Grant project started in 2014 under the People's Progressive Party Civic Government when they returned to government, they restored the cash grant initiative and increased the amount. Ghana will soon have a state-of-the-art pediatric and maternal hospital at Ogle East Coast de Marara. This was set in motion with a sad turning ceremony on Sunday, July 31st. The future low-rise facility will cost 149 million euros and be constructed at Plot 7 and 8 Plantation Good for what in East Coast de Marara. The move to establish the state-of-the-art hospital stemmed from a memorandum of understanding signed between the Cooperative Republic of Guyana and the country of Austria. During the ceremony, President Irfan Ali stressed that bilateral relationship is very critical for the development of any country, emphasizing that women and children are a critical component of the development of this country. Meanwhile, Minister of Health Dr. Frank Antony said the turning of sod signifies another era of public health investment in Diana. Today, we are at another milestone in the development of public health in Guyana. The turning of the sod, when the president turns the sod today, would usher in a new era of public health investment in Guyana. Perhaps, or well not perhaps, it would be the largest public health investment in the entire history of Guyana. And in the times when countries are affected by COVID and many economies are down, we are making these bold investments in our country for our people to make sure that they can get the best health care. The Level 5 Referral Center will be open for maternal mothers and babies from the various regions seeking medical aid that is not available in their respective districts. Our public health system, we have five levels. The lowest would be the health post, health centers, then we go up to district hospitals, regional hospitals, and then referral centers. And the only referral hospital that we really have is a Georgetown Public Hospital. And so the more complicated cases end up at the Georgetown Hospital. But then even with the facilities and the investments that we have made over the years at the Georgetown Hospital, there are still many things that we cannot do at the Georgetown Hospital, especially as it relates to pediatric care. And in each one of the areas at the hospital, we can have various subspecialities. And one of the things that we thought that was very important is that we need to develop we need to develop a facility that is going to be level 5 that's the highest level and offer subspecialty care to our children if they need it 
The health minister noted that while the hospital will have inpatient and outpatient clinics like any other hospital, the quality of services offered will be vastly different with advanced clinics and diagnosis tools. The modern hospital will have 256 beds and covers some 24,000 square meters of gross flow area. The construction of the new ultra-modern health institution will be facilitated by Austrian company Vamed and is expected to open in the next two years. A suspect has admitted to killing a businessman from Barbies who was discovered dead in his residence, more from a Silvers. Police in Region 6 are investigating the murder of 53-year-old businessman Vikram Subaran, whose lifeless body was discovered in his home at Lot 135, Number 2, Village, Region 6, on Monday, August 1st. Commander of B Division Budnarain Pursad has confirmed the arrest of the main suspect along with two other persons. Reports are that Subaran's body was discovered around 6 a.m. lying on the kitchen floor in a pool of blood with a visible stab wound to his back. Dean Subaran, a brother of the deceased, claims a female relative who works at the residence made the findings. The perpetrator reportedly gained access to the house through a kitchen door that was opened. The back door was left ajar with no signs of forced entry. A portion of the bedroom in the downstairs flat appeared ransacked. However, no determination was made whether anything was stolen. The blade of the murder weapon was lodged in the victim's back. Subaran, the proprietor of the Universal DVD and Stationery Solutions in New Amsterdam, was last seen by his brother on Sunday when he visited. The police were able to arrest the main suspect who confessed and two others for questioning. According to information received, Subaran and the suspect shared a close relationship. On Sunday evening, he invited the male suspect over. However, it is alleged that Subaran made sexual demands and a subsequent argument led to an altercation during which the suspect grabbed a knife and stabbed Subaran in his back. He allegedly admitted to investigators that he had no plans to murder Subaran. The police are continuing the investigation into the matter. For Channel 2 Headline News, Esther Silvers. Thanks, Esther. Stick around after the break. Rose Hall teacher perishes in accident on Chesney Public Road and COVID-19 and how it continues to impact many patients even after the infection period. Traveling soon? Then come into John Lewis Styles on Waterloo Street and let's help you choose the right set of luggage. You can choose to buy three-piece luggage sets, or separate pieces, but the sets are always a better deal. Either available in soft poly, or ABS hard side material, with four-wheeled spinners, and in many colors too. Also available are carry-on luggage, computer bags, duffel bags, backpacks, travel pillows, blankets and lots more to make your trip enjoyable. John Lewis Styles. Simply different. Good, good girl, forget things. Oh, What's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for do a surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisum's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs and carpets, bedroom, dining and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs and filing cabinets, outdoor benches and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Riverton and Camp Street, Kisun's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Sooner or later you will have another power failure. Are you prepared for the next blackout? Some essential equipment such as security cameras, lights, internet, gate motors, and water pumps may stop working. How can you prevent the next blackout? 
InverterTech has an affordable solution for you. A strong UPS system which uses the latest inverter and solar battery technology to prevent blackout. We smartly calculate your average power demand so you don't spend more than you need to. Call 223-2233 for more information. When you need money and you gotta get it fast, Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 4 to 6 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955. Welcome back. The Ghana Police Force has issued a wanted bulletin for 30-year-old Alex Ned, last known address the Penitence Public Road, Georgetown, for questioning in relation to the murder of 33-year-old Mason Rodwell Phillips, called Fishy of Broad Street, Charlestown. Phillips' lifeless body was discovered around 1 a.m. on August 1st under the Penitence Public Road. When the police arrived on the scene, Phillips' body was examined and discovered to have several chop wounds to the center of his chest, his right face, his left side back, and his left foot. A cutlass was also seen next to the body. The body was pronounced dead at the scene and taken to the Memorial Gardens Funeral Home, where it's awaiting a post-mortem examination. Several persons were questioned in the area and CCTV footage were viewed by the police, which has led to Ned being wanted for questioning. If anyone has seen or has information on the whereabouts of Alex Ned, please contact the police on 225-6941-225-8196-911 or the nearest police station. A well-known teacher in East Burby's quarantine perished after he lost control of his car over the weekend. Esther Sobers has the details. The county of Rose Hall town East Burbies was sent into sudden mourning over the weekend when a well-known teacher tragically lost his life in a fatal accident. Dead is 39-year-old Sydney Court of Rose Hall town East Burbies quarantine. Court perished after he lost control of the car he was driving and slammed into utility posts and fence on the Chesney Public Road. According to reports, around 1.40 a.m. on Sunday, July 31st, court was proceeding west along the Chesney Public at an alleged fast rate of speed. He lost control of the vehicle and slammed into a utility pole before crashing through the fence of a residence and hitting their car that was parked in the garage. Court's wife, Trishana Park Court, related that her husband had dropped her and their child at home and left to hang out with some friends. In the early hours of the morning, she received a call to visit the Port Morant Hospital. Upon her arrival there, she received the news of his death. Residents said that they awoke to loud sounds and upon checking, they saw the shed had collapsed on a parked car and the wrecked car was also in the yard. Persons rushed out to assist the injured court and a passing police car also offered assistance. Court was rushed in an unconscious condition to the Port Morant Public Hospital where he was pronounced dead on arrival. For Channel 2 Headline News, Esther Sobers. Thanks, Esther. While persons continue to get infected by COVID-19, some die, some hospitalized, and others get well. However, the effects of the deadly disease do not always end there. Long COVID is a name used to describe the continuous impact of COVID-19 on many people who contract the virus even after the acute phase or period of infection. Studies have shown that about one-fifth of persons infected or reinfected with COVID-19 can develop prolonged symptoms that last for more than a year in some patients. Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony, during Friday's COVID-19 update, explained that after someone would have had the acute phase of the infection, let's say they were hospitalized and discharged, some persons would continue to experience symptoms for long periods of time, in some cases as much as a year, and in other cases, probably longer. The symptoms, depending on what it is, can persist for long periods of time. Uh, the latest one that some of the studies are showing is that uh, persons who have long COVID uh, can experience problems with uh, sex drive, uh, can experience hair loss. Uh, so these are the symptoms they are still trying to unveil. 
Minister Anthony explained that the Ministry of Health had established a multidisciplinary team to monitor and provide care for long COVID patients. In Guyana, we have set up uh, teams of people who would normally see these patients depending on what, what symptoms we are seeing or what symptoms they are presenting with. And we continue to treat them symptomatically. Additionally, 400 local physicians have been trained by top experts from Mount Sinai Hospital in New York to help them better detect and treat patients affected by these prolonged symptoms. The health minister added that the medical team at the Georgetown Public Hospital would work with patients to ensure they receive treatment. Don't go away after the break. U.S. Vice President Harris announces $1 billion to states for flood, extreme heat, and world one misstep from nuclear annihilation, UN chief. When you need money and you've got to get it fast, Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 46 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisum's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture offered at amazing prices will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs and carpets, bedroom, dining and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desk, chairs and filing cabinets, outdoor benches and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Carriverton and Camp Street. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Sooner or later you will have another power failure. Are you prepared for the next blackout? Some essential equipment such as security cameras, lights, internet, gate motors, and water pumps may stop working. How can you prevent the next blackout? InverterTech has an affordable solution for you. A strong UPS system which uses the latest inverter and solar battery technology to prevent blackout. We smartly calculate your average power demand so you don't spend more than you need to. Call 223-2233 for more information. Traveling soon? Then come into John Lewis Styles on Waterloo Street and let's help you choose the right set of luggage. You can choose to buy three-piece luggage sets, or separate pieces, but the sets are always a better deal. Either available in soft poly, or ABS hard side material, with four-wheeled spinners, and in many colors too. Also available are carry-on luggage, computer bags, duffel bags, backpacks, travel pillows, blankets and lots more to make your trip enjoyable. John Lewis Styles. Simply different. Good, good girl forget things. Good. Ah! Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for doing surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Welcome back. Now we take a look at today's regional and international news. Colombia's president-elect has promised to normalize diplomatic relations with neighboring Venezuela after years of tension, Al Jazeera's Alessandro Rampietti reports. Carolina Moros, co-owner of a biodegradable detergent company in Cúcuta, proudly shows off her cleaning products. But what she's missing these days are clients. Economic hardships meant she had to let go of 21 of her 23 employees. She says only the resumption of trade with Venezuela will save her. It is of extreme importance, if not vital for us. I think this could offer us a lifeline. We could reach markets and clients again. It's a big opportunity and we need to take advantage of it. The border between Colombia and Venezuela has been closed to all but pedestrians since 2015. The neighbors severed relations three years ago. 
Now leftist president-elect Gustavo Petro is promising to normalize ties and get goods moving again. Annual trade was worth more than 7 billion US dollars back in 2008. Last year it was just 155 million. Business leaders hope that will change quickly. We can regain the 120,000 jobs we lost in a short time, in just a year, and we think this is an historic opportunity. For logistics, geography, costs and agriculture, we could be the Venezuelan pantry for food and raw materials. We've been victims of political fights. Bitter divisions among political foes that left the region in tatters. This is the Bridge of Tienditas, a state-of-the-art overpass with three lanes in each direction, warehouses, offices and everything that's needed to facilitate trade between the two countries. It was completed back in 2016 at a cost of $36 million, but it has yet to enter into service. Years of closure have also led to an increase in crime. Venezuelan businesses have resorted to buying Colombian goods smuggled through illegal crossings, raising costs and empowering criminal gangs. Trade agent Sandra Guzman shows us the few supplies stuck in her warehouse waiting to cross legally. She says restoring trade will take time as rules need to be re-established. It will have to be very gradual because we need to regain confidence. Before 2019, we had between 12 and 15 licensed public warehouses for international commerce and a duty-free zone. Today, we have none. Zero. But one thing everyone here agrees is that reopening the border is the first step to providing opportunities for both sides. Alessandra Ampietti, Al Jazeera, Cucuta. Kamala Harris, the Vice President of the United States, has called climate change an immediate and urgent crisis as she detailed Biden administration's effort to respond to disasters such as the deadly flood in Kentucky and wildfires ravaging her home state of California. Al Jazeera's Rob Reynolds reports. Heartrending scenes in rural Kentucky as intense rainstorms have caused flooding day after day in mountain valleys. Many people in the impoverished region have seen all their possessions washed away. We've lost four houses, a um, couple of vehicles, all our farm equipment. I mean, technically, there's nothing else left for us to lose. My home's gone. My new home I just bought for my four children's gone. So I had to start from scratch all over again. Even worse, the floods have claimed at least 30 lives. These children were ripped from their mother's arms by the rushing water. All four siblings drowned. The death toll is expected to rise. There are hundreds of unaccounted for people, minimum, and we just, we just don't have a firm grasp on that. I wish we did. More than 12,000 people are without electricity, and there is more rain on the way. Intense weather events like the one in Kentucky are a consequence of global heating, scientists say. This is exactly the fingerprint, the signature that we would expect with global warming due to the increase in greenhouse gases from human activities. As the atmosphere warms, the air can hold more moisture, unleashing epic storms. In Las Vegas, the desert city better known for casinos than catastrophes, thunderstorms inundated the famous strip and flooded hotels. When conditions are right, we can get these catastrophic rain events, several inches per hour. From flood to fire. In Northern California, a wildfire sparked on Friday grew to consume more than 23 square kilometers of forest land, the biggest blaze in the state this year. Firefighters found two people dead in a burned out car in their home's driveway. Firefighters say years of drought and unusually high temperatures, also linked to global warming, have created more intense and fast-moving fires. The Biden administration and Democrats in Congress are pushing a bill to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and move toward clean energy. But Senate Republicans, including their leader Mitch McConnell, part of whose own state of Kentucky is underwater, oppose the climate legislation. For those affected by the back-to-back -back disasters sweeping the country, the legislation is far too little, too late. Rob Reynolds, Al Jazeera. 
and internationally, nuclear threats emanating from the war in Ukraine as well as in Asia and the Middle East have put the world one miscalculation away from nuclear annihilation, the United Nations Secretary General said, Al Jazeera's Kristen Saluni reports. The UN Secretary General kicked off the 10th review conference of the NPT by sounding the alarm. Today, humanity is just one misunderstanding, one miscalculation away from nuclear annihilation. We have been extraordinarily lucky so far, but luck is not a strategy. His pessimism stands in sharp contrast to when Russia and the United States signed on to the treaty in 1970. Uh, this is indeed an historic occasion. It was the height of the Cold War, and the goal was to prevent a nuclear conflict. Nations of the world moved from a period of confrontation to a period of negotiation and a period of lasting peace. As recently as January, the five permanent members of the UN Security Council, who also happen to be the officially recognized nuclear weapon states, the United States, the United Kingdom, Russia, China, and France, all pledged not to further disseminate nuclear weapons. But a month later, Russia invaded Ukraine. While Russia claims full compliance with the NPT, others consider that a threat. And it's engaged in reckless, dangerous nuclear saber rattling, with its president warning that those supporting Ukraine's self-defense, quote, risk consequences such as you have never seen in your entire history. And then there's the Iran nuclear deal, agreed in 2015. It was heralded as a step toward reducing proliferation until the U.S. withdrew. Now Iran says it has enough uranium to build a nuclear weapon. While few nations have gone as far as North Korea in trying to build them, anti-nuclear campaigners say other countries are expressing a new willingness to host them as a deterrent. That's what frightens Valeria Hess, a nuclear expert from Ukraine attending the conference. So there is a widespread belief that nuclear weapons have prevented a big war. And it turned out not to be true. Signatories to the NPT are meant to gather every five years in an attempt to advance the goal of disarmament. This year, thanks to global tensions, experts say there's little hope of action. Kristen Salumi, Al Jazeera, the United Nations. And that is it for today's regional and international news. Here now is your three to forecast. That is all for this edition of Channel 2's Headline News Updates. Tune in on Wednesday at 7 p.m. for another episode. Be sure to subscribe, like, and follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other.